are so let it really know that our God is so good. And all the time. And there's no better place to be than in his presence. Ever. Or in the living in the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's stand on this worship this morning. Give him our thanks and our praise and our love back.
good. All right. Sit down right here for me. Say, yo, Joe, good job. Look at all of y'all with your good-looking backpacks. All right. So before we bless those backpacks, oh, my goodness. Look at her. Come up with that little backpack. Okay. Hey, Joe, you come sit down here, bud. All right. Look here. Go sit right there. There you go. Sit right here so we can talk. I'm just going to show you my friends. You see my two friends right here? Y'all know who they are? The m and guys. They're the m and guys. So that's a guy and a girl, and it's their first day of school. Yes. It's their first day of school ever. And they know each other because they go to the same church. So they know each other. But then my friend over here, y'all know who he is? Kool Mr. Kool-Aid Man. Have y'all ever seen a Kool-Aid commercial? Yeah. What does he say? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, no. No, because you can't fall on the stairs. I don't want to fall on the stairs. So, here's what the problem is. It's their first day of school, and they know each other, but he's new. He doesn't know anybody. Nobody. And he's nervous, and he's scared, and he's never been to school before. What do you think they could do to make him feel better? Help him. Help him. They could talk to him, right? Be his friend. Maybe they could come a little bit closer to him and talk to him a little more. Look, he's trying to give him a high five right there. Look, trying to give him a high five. Right? Hey, I do with what I got. Okay. So, look here. They could come talk a little more. They could show him where his class is. They could tell him who his teacher is. Maybe they're in the same class and have no idea. Right? So when you go to school tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, Wednesday. Who starts school Wednesday? Lots of them. Who already started school? You're going to Holborn? All right. You're going to school too. We're praying for your teacher. Okay. <laughs> Extra prayer day. Okay. So everybody pretty much starts school except for Joshua and he's already started. Has anybody else already started school? Anybody else already started? No? Okay. So we're going to pray that on your first day of school, if you go in and you see a person that looks lost, what are you going to do? You're going to be their friend, right? You're going to say, hi, my name is, right? And tell them your name. And ask them maybe where are you going, who are you looking for, who's your teacher, what grade are you in? And what about our new kiddos who are standing over here all by themselves, right? Especially your church friends, if you see somebody standing all by themselves and they look a little nervous, what can you do? Run over there and help them, right? We want to be a friend, and we're going to pray that y'all all have friends that will be that kind of friend for you, okay? All right, so here's how we're going to do this. I laid my list down. We're going to pray in just a minute. But, so here's what I want to know. Who are our kids starting school the first time ever? Who are our pre kers Who's our pre kers That's Bo, that's Sadie. Who else? Who else is starting? You've been to school before. <laughs> Ellie, is this your first year you ever go to school? Yeah. Who else? Oh, are you starting school for the very first time? Yes. Who else? Anybody else? Okay. All right, so there's our first-timers. We have to pray for them. Now, let me see who else. Who else is going to school in kindergarten through 12th grade has been to school before? Lots of y'all, yes. Lots of y'all of all ages, right? Where is... Hold up, hold up. I'm missing somebody. Where is Kimley Page? I need you down here, Miss Kinley. Hey, Keegan, I need y'all down here being an example. Y'all give them some, give it up for them. Come on, get up down here. Oh, yeah. I was like, where are our older kids? Okay, so all down here we have pre-K through 12th grade and a few littles that can't wait to go to school, right? Going to daycare, maybe. We have some homeschoolers. We have a little do we have any college kids? Trey is not here today. Trey is not. Huh? He's already gone. Say, so, okay? So Wesley's already gone to school. So a couple of our college kids have already gone to start. Okay. PT school.
people. Carly's in me, so see, we've got lots of people out. Okay, so we're going to say a prayer, and then all of us are going to say a prayer for y'all. So first we're going to say a prayer for y'all. Are y'all ready to pray? Sit down. Sit down so we can pray real quick. All right, y'all repeat after me. Okay, sit right here. Okay, you ready? Dear God, Dear God. open my eyes. Here you go. That'd be great. 
here. That'd be great. There you go.
using the same name he uses. When he says, he teaches them how to pray, our Father our who art in heaven, he's teaching them in the Hebrew and in the Greek to say, Abba, Father. What we break down and know of in our language as Daddy God. So he's teaching them to call out to him. And then he invites his disciples to call upon God as their children, as God's children. To talk to him like a loving parent would have this conversation with their children. And he's teaching them about that to trust that they belong to God, to trust that God cares for them, to trust that God wants to give them all of his good and perfect things, every single thing they need that is good and life-giving. So Jesus is saying in Luke 11, reinforces this invitation. So if, if human parents, with all their faults, he says, know how to give good gifts to their children, well then how much more... Can our Father in Heaven give? How much more will our Father do knowing that He wants to give good gifts to His children? So especially He lines out the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're looking at today is Jesus teaching us how to pray and the importance of prayer. So Jesus invites His disciples uh, to pray that God's name would be hallowed and that it would be kept holy. Uh, and He asks us in this text to act in the same way, to keep that name holy. He says these honors and these petitions, these requests, that follow all of this, kind of flush it out what that means. So when God's name is kept holy, when God's name is kept hallowed, that's when God's kingdom comes. And that's what the prayer says. There's this daily bread for all. He says, and there's forgiveness for all. As we turn around and forgive those who are indebted to us, that's how the prayer goes. And then it says at the end that God delivers the faithful from their times of trial. So he opens up with this model prayer, and then the scripture that we read today goes right into this parable that he tells, um, the parable of the shameless friend and the parable of the friend at midnight. Now you have to understand, to, to understand this parable, you have to understand the culture at the time. So the culture at the time was that you were hospitable to all. Hospitality ran deep. And so here's friend number one, who travels this long, lengthy journey. He comes to his friend's house, and it's midnight, obviously. He comes to his friend's house, and he's hungry. Now, in those biblical days, you fed who came to your house. And so there would be these travelers who would go these long, weary journeys, sometimes because there wasn't modern communication to say, hey, I'll be there at midnight, right? Or, hey, I'll be there for a late check-in, you know, how we get to do today. Or sometimes in the dead heat, of the day, they would wait until a little bit cooler temperatures at night to travel. And so sometimes they wouldn't get there until later. Sometimes they misdirected themselves and went the wrong way. So there were all these reasons they might arrive late. But the hospitality was that you fed that weary, hungry traveler when they got there. Now, so he shows up at friend number two's house. Friend number two has no bread. That would be dishonorable that he could not take care of his friend. So in order to save his honor, he goes to friend number three's house, right? And he's banging on the door at midnight. Friend number three, it says in the scripture, is already in bed, right? Already in bed, already locked up. But here's the thing about this parable. This parable is used to illustrate that God can be trusted to respond to all prayers. So if hospitality was of paramount importance, here's where we see the third friend. As Jesus is telling this story to this first century Israel group of people, they know how important hospitality is. They know that when friend number one arrived at friend number two's house, friend number two needed to feed, no matter what time it was. Well, if friend number two had no bread, now we're talking fist-sized loaves of bread here. So it wasn't this extravagant meal. Bread. Friend number two couldn't offer him bread, so friend number three needed to answer his door, right? Now, as they tell this story, as Jesus is telling this story, most people would say, well, how rude of friend number two to go banging on this guy's door at midnight asking for bread to free feed his friend that this person might not even know. Are we following this story so far? So these, this first century church, we would think, how rude of friend number two. Friend number three, it says in the scripture, is in bed if his children are in bed. The whole family probably shares one room. Where they're up on a level, if we follow first century Israel, probably up on a level where down below them the sheep and the cows and the goats are sleeping, probably with that door somehow padlocked or locked shut somehow, he's going to have to step over his wife and all his children, all that, 
to go downstairs to wake up all of the animals that had been bedded down to get to the place to get the bread. And so he tells his friend, we're already in bed and the door is already locked. I do not, I cannot be bothered. Now, as we think this guy's being rude, here's what the crowd in that first century church is thinking. How rude is this guy that he can't be bothered? Because they know the laws of hospitality. They know. So they would if they would sympathize with friend number two, not friend number three. Because this guy, according to the first century Israel, is not helping this guy keep his honor when he can't feed the first guy. Right? Completely backwards of how we would look at it. We would think, how dare this guy knock on the door at midnight and go wake up that guy. Right? That's not what this first century is would think. So basically, it would be this guy that woke up behaving badly, right? Because he won't answer that request. But Jesus says, because of one translation says this guy's perseverance, but our translation today, I like it better. It says because of this guy, number two, because of his shameless audacity, this guy gets out of bed, climbs over all his children, goes downstairs, wakes up all the cattle, wakes up the goats, wakes up whatever. He gets the bread. And he gives it to the friend. And Jesus says he did it not because of friendship, but he did it because of this shameless audacity. But he did it so this guy's honor would not be lost. Okay? And Jesus' parable implies that if this was to happen among friends, imagine how much more your Father in heaven would do. Imagine how much more the God who loves you and wants to be good, life-giving things to you. Imagine how much more he would give you if this scenario were compared to that. Now, Jesus tells that parable, and then he quickly moves on to the teaching lesson part of it. The parable itself was not about people feeding each other. And so I really want you to grab hold of that today. Jesus moves from the parable of the teaching into the ask, seek, and knock. So if you can go back to that screen right there. He says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Jesus then says, when we pray. He says, we're to take the attitude of God's beloved children. If a father, if a son asks a father for, for a fish, is the dad going to give him a snake instead? If he asks for an egg, is the dad going to give him a scorpion instead? No, no good father would. So how much more? Say how much more. How much more. Can't y'all do as good as Raven? Say how much more. How much more. How much more does God in heaven love you that he knows what you need, when you need it, and he gives it? How much more does God love you? Now, I know, I told first service, one of my best examples is, I know when my kids or grandkids need something. Taylor knows when her kids need something. You know when your kids and grandkids need Sometimes before they even ask, you know, right? You know what they want because they start dropping little hints, right? They start dropping these little hints of what they want or what they need. Boom doesn't even have to speak sometimes. If we are driving down Highway 6 and we turn off right there by the water burger and we start going down Waco Drive, Boone can say, Mom, no, and I'll say, Boone, no, we're not going to Chuck E. Cheese today. <laughs> I, I already know. I already know. Look at him. I already know before he even asks. I know what he wants to do. He wants to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I know that. God knows exactly what we need, and that's the point Jesus is making to his disciples. You can trust this God that if these friends here in this story I told you, if this friend will do it out of obligation or peer pressure for this friend, imagine what the God who loves you and wants the best for you, imagine what he'll do. Now the best part of it, it comes to me in the end. Flip back one screen. The best part is in the very end. Is it there? Yeah, it's there. It says, if you then, I'm going to read from another translation. If you then, even though you are bad or human, even though you mess up, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. So how much more will the Heavenly Father give to you, especially the Holy Spirit, to those who ask? Now, sometimes that's a hard part to think about. Because if you look at your life 
Everybody has something in their life they've prayed for and not received. Am I right? How many of you have ever prayed for something and not felt like you got it? Right? How many of you have looked down the road and seen what God did and go, oh yeah, that's so much better? Right? And then sometimes we don't get answers at all. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is not right now. Sometimes it's pause and wait. And sometimes like God looks at me and goes, are you kidding me asking me for that? Really? Sometimes we don't know what's good for us. But God does. God knows every single thing we need in our life. And sometimes, sadly enough, despite our prayers and protection, despite our pleas for health, people get sick. People get taken in senseless violence. People in the world are dying from hunger. People in the world are facing racism and violence and different issues. And people scream, why, God? And we don't know. We just don't know. But I can tell you that God does not cause bad things to happen. It is not God's will that he will come down and take our loved ones. It is not God's will that he will cause something to happen to a child. It is not God's will that he will cause raging wildfires or massive floods. It is not God's will he will do these bad things. But it is God's will that he will work within that despair to bring good things to those who make him. That is how God works. God works to bring new life from the ashes. God works to bring new life from death. God works to bring success from despair. That's the will of God. So Jesus tells us, as he's telling these disciples every day, that we're invited into this relationship with God, a God who cares about our redemption and our lives every single day. We should be shameless when we go to our God in prayer. We should have the shameless audacity to lay our prayer request at God's feet and then say, God, I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to repeat this prayer every single day until I feel your answer come. Every day, God, I'm going to pray for my kids. Every day. Every day, God, I'm going to pray for my grandkids. Every day, God, I'm going to pray for my family. Every day, I'm going to pray for this church and this community and the people around me. I'm going to pray for my grandkids, 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 future spouses because I want my descendants to be successful. Every day I'm going to lay these audacious prayers at the feet of God. Now, is that how we should go to God in prayer? Absolutely. Don't go to God with these meat mouth. I'm not saying we're not ever going to just lay on our back and say, God, I don't even know what words to use. I've been there too. But when you have a prayer, go with this shameless audacity to God and say, you said in your word, God, you said to claim this. You said to pray for this. You said this was a promise. So God, I'm going to wait right here until your promise comes true. I'm going to wait. And I'm not going to stop praying. Whether that's through heartache and sadness. Whether that's through grief and loss. Whether that's through frustration. Whatever it is. I'm going to wait right here, God, until you tell me what to do next. And I'm going to pray. Because that's what Jesus says. Jesus says, go to God with all of your requests. This prayer is not about feeding a neighbor's neighbor. This prayer is about praying without giving up. That's what this parable is about. Praying without ceasing. Praying without giving up. Going to God because if a reluctant neighbor will help, how much more will God help? How much more will God give to you? So I ask you, are you praying for your spouse? Are you praying for your marriage? Are you praying for your children and your grandchildren and your future grandchildren? Are you praying for the school? Are you praying for the teachers? Are you praying for your friends, your, your children's friends, your grandchildren's friends, that they have the kind of friend you want them to have? Are you praying for all these people, for your church, for your pastor, for each other? Are you praying for those things? Because God says to pray. So as we wrap this parable up today, I want you to hear me. I don't care if your child is 3 or 13. I don't care if they're 33, 53, 93. I don't care how old they are. I don't care if they've broken your heart. I don't care if they've left home. I don't care if they've spent all their inheritance. I don't care if they've had an inheritance to begin with. My poor children. I don't care. I don't care what they've done. Don't give up. Don't give up because God says pray. Y'all, you have friends that don't know Jesus Christ. There are people in this community that don't know Jesus Christ. Get on your knees. Go to war for those people. Go to war. Jesus already won the battle, right? The battle has been won. Jesus fought the devil over and over and over. Not so we could go to God and go, well, I know this man named Joe. I hope there's not a Joe here today. I know this man named Joe. I don't think he knows Jesus. 
So God, if there's anything I can say to him, no, you go with shameless audacity and say, God, use me today to bring Joe closer to you. God, use me however you see fit. That is a shameless audacity prayer. That's what we're called to do. Or I don't think Jesus would have told us to do it, right? I think we're called to love the world, to not be shy in the presence of God, but to speak up. That's what we're called to do. We're called to go to battle for these people. We're called to stand in the gap for them, whether we're related to them, whether we know them, whether we're friendly with them, or whether we see them in the grocery store. We get that little plug from the Holy Spirit, the gift God gives us that says, that person needs some prayers. We're called to pray. That's what this parable is about, laying the groundwork for the Holy Spirit to work. That's what Jesus calls us to do, and he made a way for us over and over and over and over and we've got to step into it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray, right? We're going to pray with some shameless yes. audacity to go to God and pray and be expectant. You can't pray without expectation. God is ready to move, but we have to pray. Right? So we have some, some folks in our church that have been praying and praying and praying for months about how to how to do a certain ministry or what part of the ministry to be involved in or how to start a new ministry or, or whatever. Those prayers continue. So we are continuing those things for our church in shameless audacity that God would use us however he can to not just touch this community but beyond. So that is powerful, y'all. Powerful enough that we have 49 kids plus here today. Amen? That's powerful right there. Yes, Raven. Raven, come up here. Come here. I'm just going to give you the microphone, okay? Come here. <laughs> what is that all about? What is that laugh all about? It's your good laugh? Do it one more time. <laughs> so last week, you, you, saw, you saw little Hollis come up here last week, right? Yeah. Isn't he a cutie? Thank you. Aren't you a beauty? You are a beauty. I will just tell you. You're a beauty. Yes, you're a beauty. So, last week I asked Collis, I said, when everybody goes to you and smiles, and I said, who are we praying for? Who's next? And I said, tell them, me, 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 me. And he just smiled. Okay. Folks, guess who's next? <laughs> this, this, and that, and that, and that. This is the reason we have to go to God with shameless audacity. Because I'm going to cover this baby and all your babies in prayer face so the devil can get his hand on it. That's what it means to pray with shameless audacity. To claim protection all around this sweet girl and that her mind will be of Christ and she will make the decisions Christ calls her to make. That's what it means to pray with shameless audacity and to expect God to move in her life. Amen. She might be the next preacher. Who knows? There you go. I want to see your new dance. With all my heart, I want to see your new dance. <laughs> and her mother is like this. It's kind of like I said with Hollis last week, 10, 15, 20 years ago. You wouldn't have seen kids in any church doing anything. So praise be to God, this is a church that opens up to babies. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you so much for your presence here today, through each and every person here today. We thank you, God, for the children and adults that you send our way to hear about you, to learn about you, to step closer to you, Lord God. We come with shameless audacity to ask you to move in our children's lives. We come with shameless audacity to ask you to pour yourself into our school, to pour yourself into our communities, wherever we live, wherever our kids go to school. We ask for a hedge of protection around them. We claim that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. God, we claim this with that shameless audacity that Jesus Christ walked to the cross with. That, God, there is purpose and there is reason in every life here and every life we come in contact with. So, God, give us boldness and courage to continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. To raise up disciples that will serve you. That, Lord God, we can look in this church and in this community and we don't have to look far to know who's next. Because, God, you're raising them up in front of our very eyes. 
So continue, God, to strengthen us and equip us for what you call us to. We ask all of this in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. where this joy comes from and where healing comes from and where love comes from. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's not all that's stealing and you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way.